Hey guys, it's Saleh. Today, I want to do something a bit different. So as you know, OpenAI recently released their latest model called the O1 Preview, which is supposed to be PhD level smart. So I was curious to know how helpful would it be for us to use it to write a strategy and turn it into Jesse code so we can see the results. So that's exactly what I did. So let's get right into it. Oh, before I forget, we're going to have a giveaway as always. So make sure to stick around until the end of the video. If you go to the GPT store and look up the word Jesse, you can find the custom GPT that I released months ago, which would help you write strategies and also turn your ideas into the syntax that Jesse accepts. So we already had that, but unfortunately at the moment we cannot use that with the O1 preview model. And that's what I wanted to do. So instead I opened a new chat and I simply said, I need you to write me the pseudocode for an algorithmic trading strategy that is trend following. Now, I tried countless prompts and almost none of them were good enough for us to be able to use them until I came up with this one. Please include the following details. Entry signals, exit signals, technical indicators used, use one baseline indicator and at least another one for confirmation. As for baseline, I need you to define one trend property and a big one, which would use a bigger time frame. In these properties, don't simply say if the price is bigger than the moving average. If you are using mo moving averages, make sure there are multiple of them and compare the values for them. Use at least one indicator to filter out ranging markets, which happen to be like the biggest factor. Open positions with the entire capital because later I want myself to adjust my position sizing because it wasn't really helpful with that. Stop loss and take profit targets. Use an indicator to calculate them instead of a specific percentage number, which is something I absolutely hate. Suggest time frame for trading. The market that I will be trading is BTC UCT. And it gave me the pseudocode. As you can see here, it sounds okay. And you might be Curious, why did I ask for a pseudocode and not the Python code? Well, the reason is ChatGPT is not really familiar with the Jesse syntax. It is a bit, but not as much as I wanted. So the custom GPT that I had made before is much more helpful with that. So I just simply copied the pseudocode and went to our custom GPT and said convert. And I just pasted the pseudocode. And this is the result that it gave me. So this is the Python code for Jesse, and this is the key points. So it is explaining how it works, which is really, really helpful if you want to get familiar with it. So let's copy first the name of the strategy, go to Jesse, to the strategy section, create a new one, paste it here. And just so that we can find it easier, I'm going to add the word AI to it. All right. So let's go back here, copy the entire code and paste it here save it go to the back testing tab now which time frame should we trade well it said the one hour chart for exit and entry execution which would be our trading time frame and for big trend analysis it would be the four hours okay so i'm going to change this to one hour and as for date i picked since the beginning of 2022 up until 2024 until the seventh month and everything else seems fine so let's run it. Oh, sorry. I forgot to choose the correct strategy. So it was trend following AI. So let's run it again. And we're getting this error. I wanted you to see this error because I've seen many beginners with Jesse facing this one. And usually the reason is because the name of the strategy and the name of the class are not the same. So if I go back here, uh, let's quickly go to the editor for this strategy. So the name of it, it was supposed to be trend following AI, but when I copied it, I left out the word AI. And that's why we were getting that error. So if I go back and run it again, this time that error should go away. Now we're getting another error. Okay, the function object has no attribute shape. So let's go to our editor and look up trend following AI. And let's clean this up a bit and look for errors that we can fix. So Right here, you can see that we're getting a warning from my editor, which is PyCharm, and it is pretty smart. So it's saying, actually, it doesn't matter what it's saying. Let's just check it because it is using this just like a property. But if I go here, you can see it didn't define the keyword property. So it just defined a function. So that's why we were getting that. So now the error is gone. 
So let's go back and run it again. Okay, it looks like it is stuck on some kind of loop. But why is that? Okay, so you see here, it defined the name of the exchange as Binance, which isn't true. That's not the name we're using here. It's Binance Perpetual Futures. And to make sure you don't get it wrong, let's define this dynamically. So instead, I will say self.exchange. And the symbol is correct, but it's still, let's do the same here. And the time frames are right, but because this is my trading time frame, I'm going to replace it with self .time frame. All right, let's try it again. All right, this time we're getting MACD object has no attribute histo. So let's go here and look for other warnings. Let's remove this because we're not using it. And then we have here. And that's because in Jesse, the word is hist, not histo. And there's also one case here. And that's it. All right, let's run it again. All right, it got executed. That's good. And the results aren't great, but if you see, while the price was going up, our equity gear also went up. So I think it has still some potential. It didn't do almost anything during the downtrend, which is a bit weird. And during the range market, it went a bit down, but not too much. Okay, so it's not that bad. So let's go back to the strategy. And here we can see that it did not define the shoot short and go short functions. And that's why it is not taking any short trades. So if I go down here, you can see that the longs are 100% of the times and the shorts are 0%. So let's define the shoot short function. And hopefully Copilot will help us to write the opposite of our shoot long conditions here. And it did. Let's also define the go short function again using Copilot. So let's go back and run it again. All right, so now instead of 300 and something, it's taking 1600 trades. So it is taking short trades. If I go down here, you can also see it here. So that's good, but the results aren't great. So now at this point, I wanna change the code a bit based on my own knowledge that I usually do to improve the results. So firstly, I don't want to use the one hour time frame. I want to use the four hours because I found it to work significantly better with trend following strategies. So I'm going to remove this candles one hour here and I'm going to select whichever place that was used and simply use self.candles, which will give us the trading candles for our current session, which would be whatever time frame we use. Now I'm going to change the four hours for our bigger time frame and use the six hours. So I will also rename this from four hours to six hours. All right. Now let's go back and change our trading time frame from one hour to four hours and run it again. And the result is significantly better. Now we are finishing in profit with 60%. The max return is minus 28%. The win rate is at 52%. So these are actually decent results. But let's take a look. While we had a downtrend, our equity care went up, which is exactly what we wanted. However, here you could argue that this is a range market and we didn't do great, which is typical for a trend following. While the price was going up, we also made some nice profits. So the way I see it, we need to avoid the range market. And in fact, if I go to the source code, we can see that the strategy is already using the ADX to avoid range conditions. But the threshold is set at 25, which I think is a bit low. So I'm gonna replace this with 40 and run it again. And now we finished with 87% profit with a max drawdown of minus 10%, which is brilliant because usually we're okay for our max drawdown to go as a high as 20 or even 30%. So that means I can easily go here and change my position sizing to use more capital. So here, this is my quantity. I can just simply multiply it, let's say by three, and 
also do the same for the go short and run it again all right so we're getting this error which is basically saying we run out of margin and that's because i haven't changed my leverage number so it is currently set at two so let's increase this to four now again yes it is set to four but i'm still using three i'm just using three times of my capital but i set it to four just in case to uh, you know my trading fees or anything like that won't cause us issues so let's run it again and now we are finishing with 432 percent profit with a max return of minus 31 percent which is acceptable to me now obviously there are much more optimizations that we can do to this strategy and in fact i am going to keep working on it and create a premium version of it and submit it to our strategy index page on our website and i will also submit this free version to our website that you can use now this was a new type of video that i just did I'm not sure if you guys liked it or not. If you want me to try out other scenarios with AI or other ways we can use it to write new strategies, let me know down in the comments so that I can make more videos like this one. Now, before I leave you, we're going to have a giveaway. A random user who likes this video, posts a comment and subscribes to the channel is going to receive 1 million bank token. All right, let's pick the winner from my previous video. And the winner is... Huge fan brother, please don't stop what you're doing. This is hands down the best framework on the market right now and you're absolutely killing it. Thank you so much for your super nice comment. Please reach out to me so that I can send you your bank tokens. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.